Hello. There are legends about me, apparently, so. Hey, well, it's good to be with you all. Thanks, Aaron, for the introduction. And uh, I hope that y'all had a great holiday, a great Christmas, time with family and friends and food. And uh, we definitely had some great family gatherings and get-togethers and stuff like that. And so it was definitely a good time. Uh, It didn't exactly go as planned for me. Uh, Christmas Eve, I ended up getting a winter bug. And so I had to spend Christmas at home asleep, which was a bummer. Um, But the family went off to the relatives, my family's house, and uh, had a ton of fun. And it was really, really cool. And so uh, as we're doing this service this morning, uh, we're really thinking about looking back at 2018 and kind of reflecting on the year and taking a look at what kind of a year it's been. And as I've been reflecting on the year, it's been this week that I've been uh, working on this uh, while I've been in bed with the winter bug. And so if you're like me at all, I tend to feel like my week is my year. Uh, do, you know, do you know what I mean by that? It's like how I'm feeling in this moment is how my whole year has been. And so as I was writing uh, this for this morning, I was thinking like, oh, this whole year I've just been sick and I've just been in bed and my whole life is sick. And I just was reflecting on all of the challenges that I faced this year. And I was reflecting on my family and the challenges we faced and how we started off the year really strong. I remember January, we had these two brand new twins who were just a month old and uh, unfortunately they were stopping their sleeping as as much as they were sleeping uh, because that first month was golden they just slept the whole time and so now they needed a little more time care and attention and uh, we were excited but within a month we were already in the hospital with uh, Shiloh for RSV for five days Uh, I remember living in that hospital Uh, I I slept on this little bed thing by the window for five days and going to the cafeteria to get food. And and I remember a a few weeks later, uh, my wife Hartley ended up with our daughter Sage in the hospital for RSV for five days. And uh, thankfully, they're okay. uh, But that was that just started this whole health journey that we didn't know. But RSV can affect your lungs and your development and all these sorts of things. Uh, we're still doing breathing treatments and we're still doing all sorts of things because it's the winter time and so we got to help take care of that. And so uh, this, this year for my family and I has just seemed like one challenge after another. And then for me this summer and this fall, I had this whole digestive illness thing that I got and that lasted a little while. And it's just seemed like, God, all my plans, all the things that we had like worked on, that we had come up with, and the trips we were going to take, and all these things, it just seems like they're constantly interrupted. It just seems like things aren't working out. And God, don't you work together things for good? Like, aren't you working for my benefit? How come doors are closing? How come obstacle after obstacle keeps presenting itself? And so as I've been reflecting on this year... I can't help but notice all of the obstacles that that we've been facing. And, uh, but at the same time, if I'm being really honest, while I was looking at my photos, and that's something I do at the end of the year. I don't know how you guys do it, but I love that week between Christmas and New Year's. I open my photos on my phone, on my computer. I look at my social media posts from the whole year. And I like to see all the little moments that I captured. And as much as in this moment, in this week, I felt like, man, life has just been so difficult, I also saw a ton of photos with a ton of smiles. And I saw a ton of good events. Uh, We went to a bunch of fun places this year as a family, with extended family. We did go on some trips. We were blessed by so many people who who gave us either babysitting or a date night out or a fun trip by somewhere. We had a ton of fun nights just at home, just playing or just eating dinner. Uh, And as I looked through all my photos of the year, I just saw there were so many good moments, so many blessings from God, so many wonderful things that we got to do and that we got to experience. But it's funny how, depending on how I'm feeling in the moment, I will feel like my whole year has gone that way. And so if I look back on this last year in my life and in my family, there have been a ton of blessings from the Lord, a ton of things that I can really give thanks for. And I bet that's true for us here. 
I bet that we could all say that there have been some, some burdens this year that we've really faced that have been really difficult, but that there have also been blessings. There have also been things that have been uh, a great joy to our life. I was thinking about some of the, the things that I've talked with people about this year, some of the things that I've talked to friends about or um, some of the things that they've been through. And it, it starts to make my burdens feel kind of small. Some of the things I remember talking with people about or uh, that they had faced this year are, are going through uh, painful losses. You know, maybe this is a year for, for you where you just went to too many funerals this year. It was just, it was just tough. Maybe this is a year where um, other relationships dissipated. Maybe you went through a divorce or a breakup or a separation or a close friend that you're not close friends with anymore. Maybe this was a year where there were financial struggles, difficulties, challenges that, that were just difficult to overcome. Maybe this was a year that it just seemed like things just weren't working out. Or maybe for you too, this was just one of those health years that just seemed to be really difficult. But for some of us, and hopefully all of us, there have been blessings too. There have been new relationships. Maybe in our family or in our friends, we've had a new baby born this year. Or we've had someone adopted or in process, right? Maybe we've had a new friendship, even just a new acquaintance that we've met. Or maybe for some of us, we just have that friend that, that's been there for so long and we're just grateful to still have them. Maybe for some of us, this was a good health year. This was a, a highlight. Or for others, it was just a casual year, but praise God for that. We're looking for the uneventful one finally. Maybe this was a year of financial blessing or where you got the job or you got the promotion or you got what you needed. Maybe this is a year where that blessing you've been waiting for finally came through. Maybe this is a year where God really just grew you and he just developed you spiritually. It's kind of funny how I tend to break down the burdens and the blessings as somehow separate when it seems that they're often interwoven. And that is still an idea that I'm still trying to get my head around. That sometimes the greatest burdens can become the greatest blessings. Sometimes the hardest things that we go through become some of the greatest things that God uses to really bless us, change us, and bless others. As I look back on my life, even just this year, some of the times I've said, God, where are you? What are you doing? How could you let this happen to me, to my family? Why didn't you protect us from this? Why didn't you prevent this? Why didn't you just magically change things? I've also seen God work good out of those situations. I've also seen him work powerfully. And I'm grateful for the ways that he is working and he's at work. But it takes patience and it takes trust. I was reminded of this verse out of Romans chapter 8. This is a verse that is so often quoted in people's times of difficulties. And if you're going through a challenging time, you usually don't like hearing this verse. Here it is. Romans 8.28 says this. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And when I've heard this verse, when I've even said this verse to people, it's almost like, hey, cheer up. Even though you're struggling, it's all good. God's going to do something. But when you're in that time of struggle, it doesn't feel all good. It doesn't feel like it's all going to be okay. It doesn't feel like it's all going to work out. But here's the cool thing about God. Our God is so good. He's so mighty. He's so powerful that in the worst situations, in the worst circumstances, in the situations that just don't seem to let up, it just seems to get worse and then it keeps getting worse. And then when you're finally about to catch your breath, another blow comes. Even then, God can work good. And if you've been in a situation of desperation, of pain, of saying, God, where are you? How could you be in this? You know that even in those darkest times, God can do good things. It doesn't mean everything's going to be okay. It doesn't mean he's going to erase the bad somehow. It doesn't mean he's going to rewind time. 
But as we trust God, as we lean into him and as we depend on him, he can and he will work good out of every situation. According to his purpose, of course. It's not always our purpose. It's not always our plan. You see, the way I would work good for my life is just a little bit different than how God would. Right? And oftentimes, God is more interested in holiness, in righteousness, in sanctification, in being more like Jesus than he's interested in me getting what I want. Than he's interested in me having a nice time. You know, I realized this year that most of my prayers have to do with feeling good. I realized that most often when I pray, I'm motivated by some sort of pain or discomfort. It might be an emotional discomfort that I'm going through a hard time. It might be a physical discomfort. But I am most motivated to pray when I'm in pain, which causes me to pray mostly for comfort. And I just thought, God, I just don't see that a lot in Scripture. Pray, therefore, and you will always be comfortable in your life. I I see you will suffer like I have suffered, (laughs) right? And so it's like, hey, maybe maybe God has a little different path than I I like to think. And so, church, I just want to encourage us. I want to encourage us to look back at this year. And to look back at all of the blessings that we've received. And to look back at all the burdens that we've experienced. Some that came and went and some that are still active. And I want to encourage us that in all these things God can work good. And not only that, but 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And as I was reading this verse, I'm thinking, it's really hard to give thanks from a hospital room. It's really hard to give thanks at a funeral. It's really hard to give thanks in desperation. I could give thanks at Disneyland. I could do that. I can give thanks when the food is right there in front of me and it's hot and ready. I can give thanks with the blessings. But can I give thanks for the burdens? And so church, I also want to encourage and challenge us this morning to give God thanks for everything this year. For he is good. For he is so good. So we're going to have the worship team come on out. And what we're going to do, because it's the fifth Sunday today, is we're just going to have a little time of reflection. And so the worship team is going to play us through a song. And I want us to, y'all can sing along, I think that would be great. But I want us to take this time to think and to reflect. Maybe just on three things this year that were a huge blessing in your life. And maybe three things that were a huge burden or a challenge. And I want us to give thanks in our own way, in our own heart posture, in our mind, in our thoughts. And for some of us, that's going to be easy. It's going to be so easy right away. We just had Thanksgiving. We just had Christmas. Thank you, Lord. This is good. And for some of us, it's going to be tough. And our prayers are going to be, God, it's hard to give thanks right now. But help me. Help me to worship you. Help me to praise you. Help me to give you the worship that you deserve because you are so good. So church, let me just pray for us. Would you bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. Father God, we come before you and we ask that you would bring to the forefront of our mind and our hearts as we reflect on this year, things that you have done in our lives, the ways that you have blessed us, the ways that you have provided for us, the ways that you have given us the things that you know that we need. Lord, to remind us too of some of the burdens that we face. Remind us of the difficulty that we experience and help us God in everything to give you worship, to give you praise and to give you thanks because you are so good and you are so worthy. God, we just say that we love you, that we need you 
that we can't do this life without you. And God, that you would have your way in our lives always. Do what you need to do. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for 2018.